In Aleppo, rebels shelled a residential area several times on Sunday in one mortar attack. A 13-year-old girl and her brother were killed. Let's now look at how the districts of Aleppo are divided between the warring sides. There are one and a half million people living in western areas, and as you can see, almost 300,000 in the eastern part, which is controlled by the rebels. And that's where the Al Nusra terrorists are located too. Our correspondent Murad Gazdiev is in Aleppo. He witnessed the aftermath of Sunday morning's shelling carried out from this very area. This was not a peaceful night for Western Aleppo. I could count explosions every 10, 20 minutes, sometimes multiple explosions. Now that it's light, I can show you some of the aftermath. This, for example, happened at 6.30 in the morning. A rebel homemade rocket, we're told this is one fragment of it, landed into that apartment over there. It flew into a window, blowing everything out. It was a minor miracle that nobody was killed, though three young girls are now in hospital. This is in al Hamidiyah, but there are many more places like this. A year ago, I got this during shelling in Aleppo, and now my three children have been injured by shelling. All of them are currently in hospital. The rebels are face to face with the Syrian army. Why don't they fight the army? Why do they bomb us instead? 23 injured in the day shelling, children, women, the elderly. The shelling is entirely indiscriminate. The only point to it seems to be to terrorize the city. As we spoke to Adnan, more shells landed nearby, as if to hammer the message home. We couldn't get closer. The area is watched by rebel snipers. We were told to go back. Another destroyed house. This one was hit in the morning. Locals said it was a gas canister bomb, a huge cylinder packed with nails and explosives and particularly destructive, a specialty of the rebels. The rescuers are now digging through the rubble. They're looking for the body of a 13-year-old girl. Apparently they can see one of her arms now, but it's dangerous and slow going. It's all unstable. In all, it took them six hours to drill into the shattered apartment and clear the rubble around the girl. A girl who should not even have been there. Her father told her and her brother not to go to school because there was heavy shelling going on. So they stayed home and then the rocket hit it. The father waited downstairs. At one point, he had to be restrained as grief had overpowered him. Her name was Sarah. One of two children in the family, a 13-year-old girl, 20-year-old brother. Both died in a room behind this wall. We asked a neighbor what Sarah was like. Sarah was a very nice girl. She was really into sports and she studied hard too. We've heard almost the same words before about the deaths of other girls here and other boys and men and women. And doubtless we'll hear them again. Murad Gazdiev, RT in Aleppo. Shortly after airing this disturbing video, we asked several international human rights organizations for comment. This is what UNICEF told us. What concerns us is that all parties to the conflict are committing violations against children. Grave, grave violations that include uh, killing, uh, maiming, attacks on schools, attacks on hospitals, uh, lack of humanitarian access. Uh, and that should stop. Violations against children in Syria should come to an end. We're also expecting to hear condemnation of the attack from Human Rights Watch, but the organization claimed it didn't have enough information about the situation in Western Aleppo. And it looks like U.S. officials and the Western media are also short on information, as they're focused solely on the other side of the city.
Syria, Aleppo, 2016. Gruesome images are all over your feeds and TV. It is the innocents paying the price. This heart-wrenching moment, two brothers learning their other brother is among the dead. Children have been killed during Russian asteroids. Unable to convince Moscow to stop bombing civilians. Russia's alleged use of bunker-busting bombs like the ones that leveled the hospital yesterday. So Russia knows the whole world is watching, waiting for their littlest misstep, the tiniest trip the slightest slip and the russians are like F it let's bomb civilian areas humanitarian convoys hospitals schools let's kill children women elderly as if being accused of war crimes and massacres is exactly what they want can you imagine it checking hourly so how are things any war crimes do we make it do we get on cnn russia and the regime owe the world more than an explanation about why they keep hitting hospitals and medical facilities and children and women. Acts that beg for an appropriate investigation of war crimes. Yes, we got Kerry. So who's next? Please, someone else notice. All the available evidence therefore points to Russian responsibility for the atrocity. Britain in the bag. Anyone else? Call us out. Can we get a France? The population qui aujourd'hui sont victimes de crimes de guerre. So it's simple. The criminal regimes of Syria and Russia on one side, innocent civilians and moderate opposition on the other. Wait a minute, where did the terrorists go? When was the last time you heard about ISIS or al-Nusra in Syria? Last year? Should we be celebrating? Are they gone? No, they're in Aleppo and a good thousand of them are there according to the UN just last week. Left out with al-Nusra. We don't talk to each other. You know it, we know it. But can you please look at my eyes? One thousand of you are deciding on the destiny of 275,000 civilians. And if you did decide to leave in dignity and with your weapons to Idlib or anywhere you wanted to go, I personally am ready physically to accompany you. I can't personally imagine Al Nusra terrorists being like, okay, you asked nicely, so let's go. They are in Aleppo and they are killing people. These terrorists are shelling government held parts of the city and children are dying there. Images like this also deserve to be investigated, but they're not because the media picks what children we should cry for. And what strikes me is we shed tears, but there are no tears here. He doesn't cry once. That little boy is in total shock. He's stunned inside his home one moment and the next, lost in the, fl in the flurry and the fury of war and chaos. I'm gonna call foul. Despite the UN having raised the alarm about a thousand extremists keeping the city in fear, America insists their presence is insignificant. Earlier this week, an RT crew managed to film a terror group's black flag flying over the eastern part of the city. Artis Gay Nature Chikan asked the U.S. State Department about civilians suffering at the hands of the rebels. This is a screenshot from, from my colleague's report. These are two girls, Maria and Lama, who were killed in, that, in the shelling of that bus stop. And I want to ask, um, civilian suffering in eastern Aleppo has been the focus of everybody's attention, rightly so. Does the U.S. government pay attention to civilian uh, to, to what's happening to civilians in western aleppo anything you can say specifically in that regard we consider uh any civilian loss of life uh, as a result of uh the conflict in syria to be one too many uh and uh it's the reason why uh, we were trying so hard to get a cessation of hostilities in place uh, so that we could get back uh, to a political negotiation uh, what you have now in Aleppo is full-on conflict uh, and uh, in that kind of climate and environment you're going to have uh, civilians uh, pay the price. Do you think that the, the shelling of this school bus stop, the killing of these kids was something that was, that was to be expected in light of what's going on? Uh, again, I think I, I, I said before, any um, intentional targeting of uh, civilians, we would strongly condemn. I just don't have the details in this uh, particular case. U.S. Senator Richard Black says that John Kerry's recent statements prove the U.S. is ready to go to all lengths to provide assistance to the rebels.
the hyperbolic language used by uh, Secretary Kerry is really, it's really outrageous. I think, I think the whole thing it is a propaganda ploy. I think there's a sense of desperation that the, the rebels that we have been supporting to try to topple the government are on their last leg there. And I think diplomatically, they're trying to give them every bit of assistance that they can. The combatants who are holding out in East Aleppo are financed and controlled by Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Qatar, and the United States. These powers have the ability to pressure the rebels to say, get the civilians off the battlefield. Syria has allowed seven exit points. They've made it very clear that they will care for, give medical attention, food, housing, to all civilians who leave rebels. They are holding the civilians as human hostages so that they can force Syria and Russia to take additional casualties.